Hey guys, we're back. Uh, so I was late to the show. Tony and Blake, <laughs> uh, Tony and Blake went and freshened up the the uh, ground pound and deer domination tonight. We're gonna go ahead and set out some of the liquids. So I think the plan is to set out the acorn on the napalm and probably the persimmon dream mm -hmm. on we, the. We could probably take the wicked look acorn traffic jam out as well too and kind of hit. Yeah, Both we'll the we'll, uh, as well as the... we'll uh we'll just we'll just pour it to it, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll see what we get, and then we'll uh we'll kind of boost it a little bit with some some sweet smelling sugar beet smash. Yep, sugar beet smash, and try to get try to get enough aroma out there to get these deer coming to this because this is a site that is going to be brand new starting right, starting from and they're already coming to the powders, so to pull them off of that yeah. might might be tough. All right, Tony, you got it. Grab our camera and All right, let's get up there. That way, let's do it. Tony brought all the mosquitoes with him. I did. I, I I packed them up with me and. I think the best way to go back up this way and head down probably. Watch out for that dog food. It's all right. I got my snake boots on. Are there two boots? <laughs> Aren't all boots? Somebody's been shooting fireworks. Make sure you hold it real steady. Come through here so you can pick everything up. Camera guy's falling behind. Yeah, well, tough job, you know. <laughs> Trying to keep it steady. We're getting back in here where they live. Right here, where it's kind of cleared out. Oh, yeah. We can put the, the camera maybe on that tree. We can spray our, our sugar beet smash on some of these leaves and these overhanging branches and set up a couple of sites of the liquid here. All right, we want to clear some leaves about. Yep. So, we kind of, you know, we probably touched on this a bit last week, but kind of explain what you're doing as you set up the site here. Well, this is called clearing leaves, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so again, like we talked about with the powders, though, as the rain comes and as obviously these are liquids, you know, this stuff will soak into the ground and they're, they'll eat the dirt and everything else. So the interesting thing is if the leaves were off, you could actually see where I shot my doe. What was that, December? Mm -hmm. Right up the hill there. Right on, so you want to dump this stuff out here, so I'll start setting up the camera. And I mean, another way to use this, if, if I mean, besides pouring it on the ground, I mean, you got a fallen tree right over here, or if you got an old stump. Yeah, I mean, maybe one the acorn or something. Yeah, we'll dump we'll, uh, we'll dump some on. The, I mean, basically, you can put it anywhere you want to. Um, yeah, it'll actually eat the bark off of stumps yeah, and they, things they like will. that. I mean, I mean, they love the stuff. Some of the original development videos that they shot with this, they were pouring it on falling over trees and stuff and they were literally just gnawing on them. Hmm. Oh look the worm likes it too. Scrumptious. You wanna taste it? Mm-hmm. Put that on my pancakes. Blake's over there getting the camera set up. Remember kids, don't litter. That's right. Always take your take your garbage out of the woods with you. Got, right, I'll pour some. got the camera about five yards away from the from the site here. Maybe five to seven yards. I'll pour the napalm and the persimmon over here on this fallen over log. We got our acorn wicked lick, acorn traffic jam right here. 
needs to get the uh, persimmon dream wicked lake over on the log give them some options yeah the camera should be able to get both spots I would think I have a feeling there's gonna be some mama does gonna be eating good this week be nice there's some fawn it's been really cool to start see uh, see oh, quite a few bucks coming through on the uh, on the bragging board this week there's some good ones coming through yeah I know so Hey Blake, have you got any fawns on your cameras yet? Nothing yet. You know they're out there. It's being elusive. Yeah, I had one in my yard. Uh, I believe it was Wednesday night. Or maybe it was Monday morning. Man, that smells good. Even better than the acorn traffic jam? I'd eat it. Mm. Tell you what, a lot of this stuff ain't too bad. Deers have it good. Being, being a deer nowadays, it's really it's really a pretty cush life. You get fed, you get your picture taken. It's not, it's really not that tough. Alright. Got the camera set over there, Blake? I think we're good to go. Good deal. Like I said, it's about, oh, it's probably five yards away from this uh, this ground site here. And Tony, you want to show them the napalm because it's a little thicker than that. Yep, yep. And we got our other uh, wicked lick port on the log about ten yards away. And just kind of doing a combination of the, the wicked lick and the napalm. And if you're not familiar with the napalm here, it, it comes in a, a pretty compact bag here. Just kind it's of it's called napalm for a reason because it's a little little thicker, a little stickier. Yeah, you it, see there, it's it packs like it packs more of a punch in a in a small amount. See, so just, just kind of drooling off the log. Oh, they're gonna eat that right up. That actually does look like it'd be pretty good on a pancake. <laughs> it's about the right consistency. I got a pack you can take home and try. <laughs> Boys got to eat. Yeah. If the deer won't eat it, Tony will. <laughs> you bought anything. <laughs> All right, the camera's live. All right, yeah, no, let's let, let's uh let's add some spray and get some get a lot of get a bunch of scent out there. You know, so as you can see here, I'm shutting the, the bomb on and off. And a lot of people may not know this, that if you don't lock that down, it, you can save it and set it off in a couple different sites. You know, so we'll hit this tree. Spraying it up and down the tree, on the leaves, on the bark. That napalm actually smells really good. Yeah. Can we get a whiff of it? Ooh, I do like that. I'll tell you right now, pancakes, waffles, whatever you want. <laughs> you know, and then there's the the normal way that set off the bomb and, and just let it go. I'm not too worried about getting close to this one because uh, it's, it's more of a tasty smell than uh, filling esters. <laughs> if this was extras right now, I wouldn't be this close. Uh, I can smell it from here. It smells mm. good. Sugar beet smash. And these go for, if you lock them down, they go for, what, about 90 seconds? I would say somewhere in there, yep. Yeah. And that's for, that's for any of our 6.66-ounce uh, bombs. As you can see, she's still rolling. And that's and that's going to float a long mm -hmm, ways, mm -hmm. too. You can see it fog all the yeah. way down, down the valley here. Yeah, all these leaves are going to have it on. It's going to stick to everything. And what is it, like a quarter mile and a three mile per hour breeze, I think? I believe so. I could sound about right. Yeah. I mean, you can literally see it right now fogging down through there. Yeah, I hope, hope there's nobody downwind. <laughs> if they do, I hope they like uh, beets. It's <laughs> like cake, cake batter. <laughs> All right, we're pitting out. Yep. Like I said, these, these deer are eating good nowadays. Get them a trail to come right to the food. Well, let's get out of the site and we'll go announce Ooh. last week's winner. And That's right. Let's head down back to the truck. Next one we'll grab a bag of skittles. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I'm getting it now.
I'll tell you what, the life of a camera guy is, uh, is it goes it goes very unbanked. It's tough getting through these trees without having stickers on you trying to hold the camera. You guys appreciate this. I think, we'll, I think what we'll do is we'll start running odds on how, how many how many how many times Tony whines next week. <laughs> I learned from the best, Jason. No <laughs> Hey, this would make a good licking branch right here. Actually, it would. Like you got a built-in licking branch right here. Maybe we'll set up a mock scrape there yeah. in a few weeks. Yeah, we'll be doing the four-ounce uh, urines here in a couple weeks, and we're gonna do we're gonna do a do a live episode on. I, I use I use mock scrapes religiously, and I've always had great results with it. So we're planning on doing a just kind of a how-to, real simple yeah. setting up a mock scrape. So this would be ideal right here. This is perfect height for a good licking branch. Yeah, it's like I mean, it's almost like it's. Someone put it there that Did way. You put that there, though, Tony. Uh oh, there are some zip ties. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, I've done it. I've zip tied them. I've used baling twine to tie limbs up. Screw, cut down big limbs and screwed them into a smaller tree. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Yep. Deer don't know any difference. They don't care. They don't see the the rope, the zip tie, whatever. All right, we got any questions, Tony? Let's see, folks. We got any questions out there? I haven't, I haven't seen any come through yet. They're just enjoying the show, I guess. <laughs> we got a few viewers on there just having a good uh, Thursday night buck bomb live. Here, guys, I got your hands sticky. No, I had spin gloves on. Whew. See, he was thinking ahead. He put on the nitrile gloves and ready to roll. That's okay because I have wipes. Oh, Ooh. Not those. Not, <laughs> not those wipes. Yeah, We're not about baby wipes let, here. Let me let me use let me use uh, Windex wipes on my hands. <laughs> Actually, have some make fish, them nice and shiny. I have some fishway wipes from when we did the live on the lake. Oh yeah. Tell you what, eat fish and anything else, it works. Mm -hmm. Mitch, so, Mitchell so, Green says he's just waiting to hear his name to win the uh, the giveaway <laughs> from last week. At a boy. So that's a good question, Tony. Who's our who's our winner this week? Well, much to much to Mitchell Green's um, disappointment. <laughs> disappointment. It's actually going to be Michael Lapp this week. Michael Lapp. No way. Yep, yep. He won the bragging board. Uh, all you had to do was share it, and that's how it is every week. Just share it, and uh, you get entered to win the giveaway. And uh, we're really appreciating seeing everybody's uh, photos of their bucks they're getting on camera. It's really cool to see the growth. So Michael gets a choice of bag of deer domination. Yep. And a buck bomb hat, or a four ounce one of our four ounce uh, scents with detonator. a detonator and a buck bomb hat. So Michael, uh, reach out to us with a message on Facebook. Let, Let us know, know which you one you want. And uh, we'll luckily get... we know your address, so <laughs> we'll, we'll get whatever you need sent up to to Pennsylvania, and hopefully we can get some stuff on the the trail cameras up there. Yeah, we know there's some. Yeah, he actually posted a couple. He actually posted a couple pictures. Yep. On the bragging board this week, so well, thanks for good. posting those up, Michael. The rest of you guys out there, hey, look, the season's getting closer, but if you guys are anything like me, I'm still having withdrawals. So the more the more eye candy we can see between now and opening day, by all means, post up your trail camera photos. And we did have someone just ask if this was private property, and yes, it it is private property. Yep. Um, you so. know, and, and that's a good point. You know, you you need to make sure and check all your state, and I know even right. re regional regs. I think Missouri. And certain regions of Missouri just passed no baiting. Um, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of a lot of the states, you know, have zones where you know yep. certain zones you can bait year round, certain zones you have to pull it. I mean, so all all of your states are like I said, from Illinois, we can't put out any baits or minerals. That's why I rely on mock scrapes, you know, to, However, start, to run my the, trail cameras over. The aerosols are not considered an attractant. Correct. So you Correct. can use an aerosol anywhere. So I mean, really, the point is just you know before you go out and buy. You know, minerals or, or any bait feed supplements, you know, obviously check with your, you know, your state's regulations. Again, different zones like me, you know, just moving to Georgia, it's like, you know, I'm not fully aware, you mm -hmm. know, I wasn't fully aware the first year I was here, you know, from one zone to the next, you know, what were the, what were the baiting regulations. So just make sure you, you check those things, uh, obviously, before you just go out and start pouring stuff on, <laughs> on the ground. That's right. As good as it works, we'll make sure everybody's not get, getting right. in trouble out there. Right, and and I will tell you, as being someone from Illinois, a lot of your a lot of your stores and retailers, they'll sell it whether you can use it or not. That's so right. it, it's always on you to do your homework yep. and uh, make sure that you know within your state, even if you're finding the stores, just make sure it's legal to put it out. Absolutely. 
Yep. So. Jeff Gilbert says it's uh, less than 60 days to bow season in Kentucky. Nice. So I know I tell you he. What, if it's as hot <laughs> up in Kentucky as it is down here, I, we're sweating just walking 100 yards into the water. Well, uh, it's so. funny because I've got a couple velvet bucks that I killed in North Dakota, but I've always, always wanted to hunt to Kentucky since their season opens early. I've seen a lot of good velvet bucks come out of Kentucky, and I actually just got a phone call last week. Then I got a I got a 300 acre place I can get on for this season, so I'm uh, nice. Pretty excited about that. About about four or five hour drive save me save me a little bit of driving well, all the way to Illinois. Every time what do you I'm got going there. on this fall, Blake? I well, think, uh... <laughs> um, I'm gonna hit hit up you know obviously the the Georgia land that Jason and I hunted last year, as well as you know my normal basically Thanksgiving kind of all the way to, to Christmas basically in Iowa. So and we'll have a we'll Iowa. have another 30 acre piece up the road behind my house we can get on this year that'll be new to us uh like i said i'm gonna hopefully get in on some some hunting in kentucky on a new piece of ground then i'm actually hunting a new new piece of ground in illinois just down the road from where i killed my buck uh this past season i've actually got three properties in illinois i'll probably hit those first two weeks of november and then through thanksgiving so mm -hmm. i'm looking forward to it i'll be be hunting a lot of a lot of different areas this year it's gonna be a busy fall I, you know we've got about a thousand acre farm in northeast iowa as well as you know we get out and hunt the mississippi river hunt the islands on the mississippi river and a lot of people don't realize that's pretty cool you know, that those, a lot of deer you know whether they walk across the ice or oh, yeah. they swim and those everything islands. else they'll get out there where they're not pressured they get chased off the bluffs and they get onto those islands yeah i used to i used to hunt an island up up near st louis called shoto island and i mean a lot of guys would be surprised if you can get to them you know, right. whether you have to use a boat or however you got to get right. to them if you can get to them they're, they're, they're typically good. They, you know, they and a lot and of that's public land. Anybody can get there. You just, like you say, a canoe or waders or whatever. You know, so if you got a highly pressured public area that yeah. you're always running into guys, start looking at, talk to a landowner that might butt up against and say, hey, can I come in the backside? I won't hunt your property. I'm just trying to get to the public land. The farther you can get away from the easy access areas, you know, the better chance you have success on those high pressure deer. Yeah, I've got a buddy in from New York State that does what he calls the venison tour every year. So <laughs> he'll, hit, he'll hit two or three states. And uh, he's, he's really been focusing a lot lately on Nebraska, uh, and he, I mean, sometimes he's hunting private land, but a lot of times he'll he'll find public ground and he'll find spots where really the only way that makes sense to get in there is to use a, he has an actual little inflatable boat with a motor on it and he'll <laughs> motor back through there and as long as it's a dinghy. And he, he gets in there and kills some good deer. So, I mean, you know, public, private, I mean, it, it's like anything else. You, you put in the time and work, you know. You gotta put in the work. You can find some good deer. My, actually, the, the my cousin, the largest deer he ever killed was killed in uh, Shawnee National Forest and he was a, 205 inch non-typical so i mean don't overlook public ground if you have the opportunity just takes effort man it's it's, it's time one, and effort it's the one that does the most homework i mean even even on private land one that does the most homework and and puts in the most effort those are the ones that are most successful on a regular basis well and you know then that's why we, we've all got the itch waiting for deer season and being able to get out and do your homework yeah now get it, your trail is, cameras out yeah, there you can scratch that itch a little bit literally probably the mosquito itch uh, but at least you're getting i've got the itch the i'll tell you that <laughs> i mean a, a good example is the buck i killed i mean we, we run 20 to 25 cameras on that property and obviously we have a pile of sheds you know that we collect every year and literally did not know the deer that i, I ended up shooting was even on that property until about a month before before i actually killed him he just showed up mm -hmm him and actually showed up on uh, one of my mock scrapes that I set up in October. And so, I mean, whether you're hunting a big piece of ground or a small piece of ground or a new piece of ground or a piece of ground you think you know well, I mean, there's no doubt. If you can run trail cameras, run them because I mean, it's gonna give you a lot of insight into not only what deer are on your property, but when they're coming through specific areas. That's right. So any questions, Tony? No questions, just some comments. You know, uh, Alan Smith says he's, He's waiting for October 1st in Oklahoma. Alan Smith, I, th I think I remember seeing a, a really good deer, a really good trail picture, truck in picture of a buck he's got on trail cameras. Yeah, we, we had some good pictures coming through. So uh, yeah, get out there and it's cool to see what everybody else is seeing out there. And uh, man, it just it just makes you want to get out there that much more when the season comes. Yeah, I'm That's ready. Right. So, well, this is what we've got this week for the, the liquids that Buck Bomb offers. Um, you know, be sure to continue sharing your, your photos on the bragging board. And don't forget to, to tune in tomorrow on the HS site, and we're yep. going to talk about 
the the scent control bags. Since yeah, we got so a, storage. a new line of duffel bags. We've gone through field. how to prep how to prep it as far as your laundry. We've yeah. gone through you know body all the body washes, shampoos, deodorants. And then this past week we went we yeah, went over all the field sprays and wipes. So the final the final chapter in the scent control is what do you how do you store them? So we'll right. go we'll go through a little more in depth on the on the bags and, and options we have for storage. Right on. So till next week. Next week I think it's what the blocks. And that's the last of the feed attractants is the mm -hmm. the blocks and then we'll uh then we'll be transitioning into some scents and mock scrapes and stuff like that. Absolutely. Cool. Thanks right. guys. Thanks, Appreciate everybody. it. All right, thanks.